City Council for March 23rd, 2015. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as distributed by our city clerk? Move approval. Second. Or second. I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda. Um, I know there's at least two people in the crowd that have contacted me beforehand that would want to speak tonight. So if we could put item C as uh, just our regular public comment section that we normally have at meetings so that they could have a chance to talk before we move on to regular business. I would second that. It's been motion and seconded to amend the agenda to add a C for general comments. Uh, discussion? Uh, all in favor signify with yes. Yes. Opposed with no. The agenda is amended to have public comments. Is there a motion to approve the amend? We've already motioned. Is there a, are we ready to vote? All in favor, this is for our regular, our amended agenda. All in favor signify with yes. 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 Opposed with no. We now have our agenda. <coughs> we need to welcome back Amanda Korth, who is an optometrist with uh, Mauer Eye Clinic. She's been with us two times already. You're now a veteran <laughs> and your full voice will be welcomed again. So it's good to have you with us. Uh, this time we will invite public comments uh, in no order. You may just come forward as the spirit leads. Megan. Hello, um, I'm Megan Burrow from Waverly, and today I'm here to present um, some facts concerning the Green Bridge. I've put together a quick PowerPoint presentation that I want to show you. Um, I just wanted to share what this bridge means to people all over the world, but more importantly, what it means to your citizens right here in Waverly. I ask you to please consider the facts um, that I show you about the Green Bridge. To start, um, we need to consider um, these things that I have up here, if you can see the screens, I'm not sure if you guys can. Um, but we need to have a significant discussion talking about the history of the repairs as well as the planning for the Green Bridge, immediate unplanned closure, historical significance, and the impact on the community as well as the local residents who are directly impacted. Uh, last week I stated that we had a petition site as well as a Facebook site that um, were up and running. Um, the Facebook page monitors both the likes and dislikes, um, and the petition site helps us gather demographic data of the people who sign in as well. Um, as of this afternoon, over 1,000 people had signed to the petition site, um, which is amazing. Uh, you can see here that 464 of these people were from Waverly, and 533 of these signatures were from Bremer County. And on a global scale, 16 countries were represented. Hmm. Um, this is the petition activity over time. Um, again, this graph shows you the representation of the Waverly area, um, Iowa, and then the grand total. This is the petition across Iowa. Um, you can see dots in uh, towns all over Iowa, but the very large dot is Waverly. And the next map is the United States. This shows you um, people who have signed the petition and in what state they were from. Um, the darker colored states, obviously there's more people who signed in those states. Um, and this highlights, you know, exactly where in the country people have signed. So the next one, this next slide tells you a little bit about the past. This should be no surprise to the city that the citizens want this bridge saved. In 2003, a group submitted a 700 plus signature petition that concluded the Southeast Waverly Residential Survey. In this survey, it was distributed to 350 homes and 134 of them were returned. In a, the opinion of 63% was traffic on the 7th Avenue Southeast and 3rd Street Southeast had increased in recent years. Last week, we discussed that there was indeed 
indeed an immense amount of traffic that crossed the bridge each and every day. Also in 2003, Kate Payne of the Historical Preservation Commission, Commission also informed the council that the his, of the historical significance of this bridge may have changed since 1990 survey due to the number of remaining trust bridges. She went to explain that this bridge was a connector between the neighborhoods, but it was also an icon in the town. At that time, a letter was sent from the Historic Bridge Foundation that supported the preservation and the fix of the current structure. It is, clearly, it is clear that this is truly a historical landmark within our town. Um, this is also our Facebook page. You can see that we have almost 1,900 likes. Um, this was, again, earlier this afternoon, and it changes at a rapid pace. Um, of this, there are 614 likes from Waverly. These numbers continue to grow each and every day. Please remember that in 2003, your, citi your citizens wanted the bridge preserved, and the same applies to today. The bridge is truly an important part of our town, and I hope you will consider what your citizens are asking you. Save the Green Bridge, and thank you. Very good. Well done. Thank you, Megan. Other public input on anything not on the agenda? Hi, I'm Nikki Welch. Um, I've been working with the Waverly Dog Park since it started in um, April. I run the Facebook page um, and I'm directly connected pretty much to the voters that won all the money for the actual dog park. Um, i just like to address a little issue that we've come about um, with the parking lot that was passed last Monday. Um, it was already pushed to and accepted by Blacktop Services um, for $36,210. Um, I just like to um, bring up the fact that the um, Wolf, which is the Waverly Off Leash Friends, who are um, an advisor group for the Waverly Dog Park, were um, not given the chance to put input, input on this decision. Um, we have talked that we have um, a budget that was um, put in front of us for the parking lot at $24,000 and it was coming, it came in at 36. Um, we're open to those kind of things, but we would like the, the fact to discuss that before it happened. Um, also too, we would like to discuss the fact that um, asphalt is very hot, oh I'm sorry, asphalt is very hot um, it has the opportunity to burn their paws, um, even on nice, even on nice days like 77, they reach 125 degrees, um, especially new black asphalt. Um, I don't know if any of you have um, gone outside with bare feet and stepped on jet black asphalt. It's very hot. Um, so we would just like to bring up that um, we would like to discuss that for the safety of our pets um, we love and care about. Uh, I have recommendations from the Waverly Veterinary Clinic, Compassionate Care Veterinary Clinic, and Avenue of the Saints Veterinary Clinic against the use of asphalt in our parking lot and hoping for an alternative, safer, um, economical option for us. Um, we would like to ask possibly if we could use gravel. I understand that there is a city ordinance for hard surfaces only. But in the aspect of safety of our pets, we would just like to ask that we would, you would consider um, letting us use gravel. Um, I'm not sure what our options are since it has already been accepted, but I just feel it needs to be brought to your attention. <coughs> and thank you. Other comments on anything not on tonight's agenda? And we thank our public for their participation. <clears throat> Regular business item number one 
is a resolve approving and consenting to the memorandum of agreement among the Army Corps of Engineers, the Iowa State Historic Preservation Office, and the Historic Preservation Commission as regards the permission to proceed to, to uh, achieve a, per, a proceed permit for our dry run project. City Administrator, comments would be helpful. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, Bill will do the bulk of the heavy lifting as he's been working with uh, directly with the Corps of Engineers and the State Historic Preservation Office. Um, but recently it came to our attention that uh, the uh, approach we were taking for the memory, memorandum of agreement on historic properties using the FEMA MOA from the flood of 2008 uh, would not satisfy the requirements for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on this project. And so we have worked on an expedited path to address uh, the mitigation of the uh, removal of a contributing home in the project area, which is the Bast House, which is a two-story on um, 6th Street Northwest. And so Bill's been spending quite a bit of time over the last two weeks uh, wrangling this through different layers of uh, federal and state government, and mm -hmm. he's prepared to give an update on the process and where we are tonight. The MOA um, was actually um, approved by the uh, Historic Preservation Commission on Thursday. Um, it, it is now at the, in the hands of the Corps of Engineers. He is, has submitted it uh, officially to the uh, National Board, Nas National Ad Council, and to SHPO, which is the State Historic Preservation um, Group, and um, both are expected to approve it. Um, Actually, the National Ad Council does not approve it. It, it basically says we don't, we don't need any more uh, involvement in this process, and we pass our, on the comment period. And that's expected to happen this week. Um, the people at SHPO, I met with them last week, and um, they are in agreement with the procedures we've set out to do in connection with this property. Um, it is limited to the one property. Um, the... The actual mem MOA has an appendix which, set, which sets forth what's going to happen. Um, what we're going to do is document the, the, the house, the floor plan, pictures inside and out. Um, we may even try to retrieve some, um, some doors and windows and those kinds of things from the structure. But at least we're going to, at, at a minimum, we're going to document all those items and, uh, and document the, the, the history of that house. Mm -hmm so that it can be maintained by the state in the state office and in our local library. Um, in fact, the other mitigation for this removal of this house is in fact the things that we did for the last, um, for the FEMA um, uh, MOA, and that is that we documented the whole district, the historic district in the Northwest. So that was our already done, and that is part of the, the kind of things that they would have asked us to do had this come up initially that they would have documented more than just this house. They probably would, would have asked for uh, more of the district to be documented. We believe that this will hopefully be done this week and that the permit will be issued this week. One of the things that is required is that the city is a signatory to this agreement, which means that this body needs to approve and authorize the mayor to sign the document when it's presented to us. Thank you. Formal motion to be in order. I'll move resolution 1564, approving the memorandum of agreement among the United States Army Corps of Engineers, Rock Island District, the Iowa State Historic Preservation Office, and the Historic Preservation Commission regarding the Dry Run Creek Flood Mitigation, mitigation Project and uh, directs the mayor to sign the agreement. Is there a second? A second. A motion and second. Council discussion. I love bureaucracy. <laughs> Took a lot of reading it, you know, three or four pages of how to make, make sure you hear. I, I got to chuck a lot of reading it in the three or four pages of how to do it digitally. Right. That photograph and and use that for documentation. Which is we we started out with with uh, thirty five millimeter instructions yeah. and how to use a Kodachrome uh, slide. Yep. So <laughs> we did replace those requirements. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaned it up. Thank you. <laughs> Any more discussion? Uh, public input on this issue.
one little Waverly. The city of Waverly finds itself in a position where we obligate ourselves to millions of dollars, literally, to a project that we can't move forward without the permit. WHKS was hired to obtain those permits and create the design for the channel. They've obviously dropped the ball on their part of performance in this contract that we agreed to with them. What are we investigating any avenues of of penalties or docking of, of the contract amount to compensate the city for the risk that they put us in? Um, I know they got a big long excuse as to why this happened, but <coughs> the reality is the contract we signed with them didn't have a, a excuse clause in it, it just had a performance clause in it. And so now the city is sitting here kind of having to hurry up and, and make this uh, agreement tonight. And because we didn't know it, and there were several corners cut to allow this all to happen the way, and Bill's worked on these things pretty hard to get this to happen. But in the process, we're gonna lose a historical house that we, if we had known sooner, we could have made the plans to offer it to be moved. Because we have a lot on the east side of the dry run that is vacant because the house burned down on that a lot. So we're gonna lose a historical house and we're gonna lose, we got put into quite a jam here. And it would seem that WHKS should be offering some kind of financial compensation to the city. Maybe uh, a response, uh, obviously that's not the mood we're in on this at all, but um, um, a comment might be appropriate from either our city attorney or our city administrator. I think it's a very fair question given the, the path that we've gone down and um, the really the, the intricacy of the project since the beginning. Um, while it's been WHKS, it's also been Stanley Consultants, and it's been working with different different levels of government. And I think uh, where we are now starting on this project um, and just getting ready to move in the construction phase, it's uh, important to understand how we got here and important to understand uh, WHKS's role in, in this issue of the permit, but it's also important to keep in perspective their uh, much larger role in the construction phase moving forward and our relationship with them uh, throughout holding them accountable and making sure that the right work gets done at the right time. So I think it's something that's looked at more in the totality than in the event. Okay. <clears throat> I'd ask if the council, even though we've completed the discussion, if there's any comments you'd like to make, we will welcome that from the chair. Is there anything I know it was just kind of an oversight and everything, but it is going to cost us an extra five to six, seven thousand dollars. Is there anything that we can? We'll do? probably discuss with them maybe uh, cost sharing or some sort of recovery on that right. That's out of one. pocket cost. Okay. Keep in mind, though, we would have had to do this regardless. I mean, this this cost that we're doing to document would have been would have been required earlier. So we're not really spending any more money other than my time in doing the work. Yeah, okay. which costs money too. But And I know, as I mean, <laughs> the preserv Historic Preservation Committee met kind of a special meeting Thursday to get it done in time and so everything. And this should, shouldn't should impact the start time of the 30th then if we get this through or is it gonna push it back a week maybe or? Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it will be done by Friday, but, um, and, and the uh, branch at the, uh, um, Corps of Engineers indicates that he does not anticipate any holding back from that because as long as we have him have the signatures sent to him this week, he's just got to get shippos and they're ready to do it. And he's got to find his colonel. So, so as long as he signs a permit, we're okay. <laughs> but I mean, that would be another thing. If it does end up delaying it, it's going to cost us a little extra and it would delay it. That might be something, like you said, where you could work out a cost share with them to maybe pay for some of that since it was an oversight. But. Thoughts. Valerie, roll call vote, please. Kangas? Yes. Dade? Yes. Resnicek? Yes. Falstein? Yes. McKenzie? Yes. Nindorf? Yes. Resolution 15 64 is unanimously approved. 
Our study session item for this evening is a briefing and discussion of our leisure services many efforts led by our Leisure Services Commission Chair, Brian Pins. <coughs> Thanks for having us here tonight. Um, we have a little PowerPoint presentation. Everyone should have received some um, kind of a copy of our overall um, PowerPoint slide notes, so you'll have a little bit more. We'll kind of take some of the highlights here and not go through all those points. We're going to tag team this, so uh, as we go along, I might be chiming in here too. All right, so we have a lot of uh, stuff going on in leisure services, um, outdoor pool, Harlington Cemetery, Civic Center, parks, dog park, outdoor pool project, river cleanup, and miscellaneous. So that's kind of the overview of all the different things that we have uh, going on at this time. First part is uh, lifeguards. Uh, we're looking into starting a share program with the W and um, the city. And with this, we have uh, some very experienced, very, um, very high quality lifeguards. And we also have some that aren't quite there yet. And so by sharing, we'll be able to maximize the deck time for the high, high quality lifeguards, which obviously the higher quality lifeguards we have, the better safety we have at each of those places. So. Uh, by sharing that, we can work out a schedule. Um, there really isn't um, a ton of information throughout the state on different groups doing this. So um, in this process, a lot of other communities are starting to look at us and see how we do this moving forward. Um, once again, it, it works with consistency of rules and will help both facilities uh, maintain that high quality and safety. The more comfortable, you can just pick up that mic. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Harlington Cemetery, uh, it's been a busy march here for us. Uh, 10 funerals so far. Um, our typical monthly uh, funerals is six to seven, so we're already way above that, uh, including one day where we had three, fu fu three funerals in the same day, um, two within six feet of each other. So that made things a little bit difficult, uh, but things went as, as best that could be expected in a situation like that. Uh, we're also looking at uh, adding a new sign, replacing the wooden routed sign with a permanent black stone sign. So this is the current sign there. We'll be looking at replacing that one. Uh, Civic Center here, uh, the area needed to be walled to accommodate private uh, conversations. So we're talking about the office area right across the hall over here. Um, we were able to take that office, we create some walls, and also um, the other desk that's across from that area, able to use, um, we're going to be using existing furniture to extend that off and make it a little bit better situation for the workers, more efficient at that point. So here is the new office that has been completed there on the right side as you walk in. And then here's what we're talking about in that part where tabs kind of moving the mouse back and forth, that'll be extended over using current furniture. Just in case you might notice, uh, this, this uh, spring we're going to be re redoing the columns out front. They've weathered uh, immensely, you see on the bottom especially, and it's something we've had budgeted for a while, so uh, don't be surprised if you see this construction going on too. All right, some parks, uh, some different things within the park system here. Uh, new out front mower, uh, that is, was, went out for bid and we've ordered that. Uh, skate park work days are coming up. Those are, what do you got for that? Wednesday and Thursday of this week, that's right. Wednesday and Thursday of this week, uh, we have over 10 volunteers. You can always use more, so um, make sure if you're interested in doing that, stop on down. Uh, tree stumps, we've uh, removed those in the downtown. We're looking to replant those with new trees. Um, city, uh, we moved 80 of those this winter uh, throughout the city. And a big thanks to Public Service and Wave Light and Power for the help in that process. So here's a uh, skate park. Currently, um, we went through and smoothed down the surface, did a little treatment to that to make that a little bit easier for the skaters there. And then um, here's where the equipment is that'll be installed, is sitting right now. 
So here's some plans for that. If you have, I'm assuming you probably have seen these before. If not, uh, so if you first look at it, um, we have um, so a lot of things that we can build. It's going to look pretty, pretty cool here after we get all this stuff up, and it should be a big uh, improvement from what we had in the past. So we're really looking forward to that. Okay, Waverly Dog Park um, fencing has um, signed the contract uh, with that. And the parking lot, obviously, we had some discussion here tonight about that a little bit. Uh, friends, of the friends group here, Waverly Off Leash Friends, um, that has been the established group that's kind of overseen the Waverly Dog Park. Uh, name of the park, we've got quite a few names down for the park. Uh, we're going to try to whittle it down to a little bit more, um, about two or three, and then kind of go from a voting process at that point. Uh, water lines will be uh, put in. We'll show you a little map of that here in a minute. And then uh, on April 4th, we'll have a dog Easter egg hunt. All dogs will be on leashes. We'll have 1,000 um, eggs out there with little dog treats in them. So that will be kind of a fun little thing there. And then um, fundraising, we'll talk about the brick paver program here as well and uh, working with the JCs potentially. All right, so this little uh, blue line here leading up, that's where the pavers are going to be placed at this point. Um, and then, yep, water lines can come right up there from the yellow all the way up and extend. And so we'll hopefully have one, or I'm sorry, we will have one where the mouse is now. A drinking fountain, and then one on the other side as well. Um, just the entrance will be off of the um, the current access road there. So here's the fundraising uh, profitability from each of these. Uh, we're hoping, you know, kind of goal to sell about 100 of the four by eight inch bricks, um, fifty dollars each. Kind of go through there. I won't read all this to you. Uh, but we're kind of looking at uh, 100 of those, 50 of the 8 by 8s 50 of the 12 by 12s and then 10 of the 12 by 12 And those ones will be a little bit different color. Those will be golden bricks. Um, there, here's the color. So th the one in the middle is the one that we'll have for m predominantly most of the bricks. And then the gold one is just the one to the right of that. Kind of give you a little color perspective on those. So brick fundraisers. Um, the prices here is, is what we're looking for. So the top three are gray color, the 4x8, the 8x8, and the 12x12. 12 12, um, $50 with a $10 charge for artwork. So you know, if you just want the text on there, that'll be 50 But if you want a picture along with it, that will be that artwork charge of 10 extra dollars. The golden bricks at the bottom will be 250 and that art will include artwork. Um, we're still looking into replica keep, keepsakes if they want to have one in their home as well as on that path up to the dog park. Once again, Waverly Off Leash Friends is the group that's that's taking charge of this. And the uh, extravaganza here that we'll have on April 4th. Yes, sponsored by Compassionate Care. Okay, so the outdoor pool po project. Um, started demolition in on February 9th, sand blasting and very cold temperatures. Um, electrical and plumbing contractors have gotten in there as well during this time. And so we got sand blasting, ro walls roughed in, light poles, say shade structures, locations cored into the cement, and electrical boxes started. So here's the new doors. So in the past, we've had that uh, garage door that went up. So now we got some different kind of doors. will be a lot nicer for entry, a little more secure as well. Over here we have the heat, the new heat vent, or where the heat will come into the building through here, each one of those holes. There it is. The holes are vents from the heaters on the other side of the wall. This is where the old heaters were on this concrete slab. And you might notice these are the old light poles right here because we're getting all new lights. Then all the way along here will be new slab work, and then actually it will go all the way to the concession stand because technically we weren't handicap accessible to the concession stand. So, <coughs> new heaters that Tab just mentioned right there on the left hand side, and then on the back right there. A little smaller than they used to be, huh? <laughs> 
And then we got the uh, chemical storage back there. You see the pool has been sandblasted here. Old chemical storage, this will be the new in the back area there, and this will be the uh, complete uh, concession stand here opened up. New fences have gone in here with a gate at the end, so no more hopping over fences to get down into there, down into the filters down in the bottom, so I'll be much safer. Um, the small pool here has been sandblasted out, and then we'll have add a little peninsula out into the pool where Tab's showing, and then the little slide will go down in the corner there. Okay, so river cleanup. A um, few citizens have um, raised concern about from Red Cedar Park, maybe that old um, landfill there is potentially causing issues and um, having some debris flow downstream from there. Um, even though we have went through all the process and we're EPA and DNR um, compliant at that time, um, there's been some raise for concern. So we've scheduled a cleanup day. Um, we're consulting with the DNR to see if there's any further mitigation necessary. Some other things, uh, new management in the pro shop. His name is Jordan David, taking over for Greg Mason, who's moved on. Uh, lots of hiring for seasonal staff. Once again, the skate park work days are March 25th and 26th. We have a hunger workshop on Friday, March 7th. March 27th? 27th. 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Okay. All right. Trail cleanup day is scheduled for April 11th. Art walk, which is the 10th annual, will be on May 2nd. Middle school service day is on May 6th, so we'll have about 600 volunteers working around their community. Community sharing gardens open on May 9th or 16th, weather permitting there. And then uh, trees, for, trees Forever, we're planting trees on 7th Avenue, Northwest Berm, it's right behind Warford. Uh, new substation just southwest of Warford, and uh, WSR Science Club sold 211 trees, so it's a good, good amount. Any questions? Before we do questions, just a thank you. When we go through all this, it's pretty impressive, all that uh, Leisure Services is doing. Thank you for your leadership on this. This is truly moving Waverly forward. And we can feel everything here is positive and, <coughs> and on time. So thank you for that. Yeah, but we still probably thank have you. questions. So yeah. uh, open up for questions. The pool, it's now that it's all sandblasted and everything, um, I'm assuming now that's the time when you caulk in and fix all the, the leaks and stuff that were happening and then it gets repainted. So it opens right. Up. It's got to be a particular temperature before we can do that, but that's the next step. They're going to clean out the, the, the joints, they're going to patching, and they'll recock it. Okay. When do you anticipate the work to be done on the pool? Right now, they're ahead of schedule. Uh, their um, substantial completion date is May 22nd. We're hoping, be, hoping to be done before then. We're going to open the pool on May 29th or 30th this year. That'd be a week later than normal. We need a week to train staff and to learn how to, it works. On the skate park work days, uh, do you have enough help or are you looking for more and what time if we're supposed to be volunteering? Or? Um, we're, we've got a group of six and that includes uh, city park staff too. Uh, they're going to be there at about 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning. That's when our um, professional assembler comes. We've got him for two days. And basically we're going to be unpacking and making sure everything is there. Uh, then in the afternoon, we're, we've got another six or seven people coming. There will be uh, assembling the, the apparatus and continue to unpack it. And then on, on um, uh, Thursday morning till about one o'clock, 
Uh, he thinks will be done by then uh, with about a dozen people. Right now we have about a dozen, but it'd be good if anybody has some skills to show up in case some of the volunteers don't show up. Skateboarding skills? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> using drills and and uh, that and assembling stuff. I'm out. Handyman skills. <laughs> Handyman skills. Okay. Handyman skills. Other comments, questions. Oh, there's a lot going on. I guess just question on the dog park and the parking lot, and have that issue been raised to enough time to have discussions on it, or are there discussions planned, or? We have a dog park meeting scheduled for tomorrow night. We're going to talk about then, uh, and then I'm going to talk to staff to see if there's any alternatives that we can do. Um, Nikki and I have had some conversations, so uh, we're aware of it. I guess that was going to, I missed last meeting because I was sick, and maybe you can still tell from my voice, but <laughs> I was just going to dovetail off what Dan said. If, if there's a way, I know that agreement passed, but if there's a way to get a change back to gravel to save money, it seems like it's safer for dogs and would save money overall. But um, if there's a some kind of city code that requires that, I'm sure we would waive that for the dog park. But just at the San Diego dog park, which was phenomenal, but they did have paved. Probably cement though, instead of asphalt, maybe. And the concrete. With the concrete though, instead of. Well. Which uh, how much more I is concrete remember. over asphalt? Still double the price. Double the price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if they're going to be talking about it, hopefully they'll be able to find some resolution that's acceptable, whether that's gravel and has to come back here or something else. It is for dogs, though, not people. So I don't think dogs mind walking on it. Well, the cars still have to go on there, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nikki and I talked, and maybe we make a paint a white walkway or something like that that we have to repaint every year because the white won't be as hot as the black. Maybe that's something we can do. Yeah. Or even maybe another surface for just a path rather than the yeah. whole parking lot. When we get to the river, I hope you keep us uh, abreast and maybe we can have a massive effort to clean up that river if it's necessary. We've had one organizational meeting. Uh, we're going to have another one here pretty soon because I've gotten more information upon how to do a river cleanup. I'm new to that too. But I have Kip Ledegi and Frank Frederick on board and they're both familiar with how that works. We're, we've been talking about the Cedar Valley paddle Paddlers as a group that potentially could help us out too, so um, I think we'll be I think we'll be fine. But I'll certainly keep you informed. Has anyone gone out to that old site to see if that actually is there's stuff there still? Or I mean, I know when we did it, we did it um, a couple of years ago. Or you know, I found stuff up by the movie theater along that you know vacuum cleaner. I mean, that stuff comes from everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty amazing what you can find when you do river cleanup. Yeah, we uh, um, this all started in November and and. Uh, the DNR didn't want to get, come out until it got warmer anyway. So. They, they, haven't, they haven't been out yet either? They're familiar with uh, uh, the area, but the, he's from Manchester and uh, doesn't know specifically exactly what the problem was. So he liked to come out and look at it. And we're, again, we're looking at warmer weather and when the river probably goes down a little bit so we can see the exposed um, uh, bank. If that's part of the problem, we don't know. Other questions? Repeat the top line. Lots of stuff going on. It's true. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just what, one uh, quick question. Sorry, the, as far as <coughs> the lifeguards sharing between the W, and who actually would supervise the lifeguards then at each location? Uh, they both would have managers. Uh, we have, we've had managers forever and they have an aquatic supervisor then the week managers on weekends. Okay. So uh, that would be the direct man, uh, supervision. Otherwise, myself and Heather at the W would be the uh, people in charge of the lifeguards. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. We have before us reports from boards and commissions, library board minutes, 
from January 13th have been submitted to us. Any comments on them? Reads like little old news, but officially received. The library board minutes from February 10th were also given to us. Any comments? Officially received. The Historic Preservation Commission minutes from March 19th have been received. Any comments? That's the one that we just talked about, so. Right, <laughs> officially received. Planning and zoning gave us a little booklet to read. That was a long report. March 5th, 2015 was the date of all that happening. Any comments on anything that they did? I just have a question, more of a policy, I guess. Is, so as I, as I go through the planning and zoning minutes, there was um, three absent. Um, so many of the votes were? Three, three. Three, three, mm -hmm. or, and I, and I guess a little bit. So there's there's one, and I've gotten quite a few phone calls on an area, of, and I'm sure that'll be coming to council soon, the 2nd Avenue Northeast and four two. Yeah. And there's a, there's a lot of people that came and spoke and and so forth, and then the vote. Um, and there's a lot of I mean, there's a page here or something, but and then the vote was four yes, two no. Um, so my question is, so if there's three absent, so really, um, so the total would be nine. Four out of nine voted yes, and they consider it passing. So. Well, commission believe in counting, I think, with commissions, is it not? Uh, yeah, I know it's yeah. I know it's different, but I guess I'd be and I've seen that in the past too. I, you know, and that's like I said, it's a policy question. I would probably be more in favor of, you know, if, um, um, you know, only four voted yes, and then so, you know, I, I've always I've always considered, you know, with the planning and zoning passes. And what they submit, you know, I, I really take a lot of stock in that. But I, I guess a little bit concerned if, if we're adding more people to planning and zoning, but less people are coming, and that kind of changes the dynamic of the vote to me. Well, they had six, correct? Six they, out of nine. Yeah. So, I mean, they had they had their quorum, but they, but they wouldn't have a. They wouldn't have a cadence, I guess, of people there. You know, next week it could be three gone, and I guess it's just something to talk about. Um, um, are you suggesting that they abide by the same rules we do? Maybe, or but well, I guess when they were adding people to it, I, I wasn't concerned because I know they had recommended that, but now I'm thinking that, um, you know, only four out of nine voted yes for something. Um, and so they considered approved, and then it comes to council. I mean, it would come to us no matter what, whether, whether it passes or fails. Um, I, I agree with what, I exactly agree with what you're saying because like if 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 there's three what if different everybody showed three, up three different people gone the next month yeah then you might get you know but yeah. um, you know it's like the the middle school one that was also a four two one which technically hmm. like you said um, yeah just just yeah. just something I I was I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this or I something I caught and it just seemed. Um, just something we can talk about. And I know before they added they added more, they were almost having trouble having quorums. So this is probably better. There's more more people there. Before but I hate they to, maybe only had they only had you know four out of seven. I guess, but I'd hate to I'd hate to have a crowd. It'd be like if if we like well, you know, resident check never shows up, so let's add another guy or girl or whatever. Right. You know, so it would. Um, and I, I'm sure that's not what they did, but it to me it would be a, a little bit of a challenge um, if the people are different and we're only getting we're getting less than half of the people for a yes vote and it passes but I agree with you I would agree too I mean it, I agree that we always take what plan planning and zoning is a very important commission so we usually take what their vote is into account when we when it does co come to us and like you said Chris it comes to us regardless but yep. I would tend to if something passed Five, three to two or four to two and not with the majority, I probably wouldn't really consider that passing myself because it didn't follow our rules. You know, I, I would, maybe a committee, it's maybe it's something we talk about at a different study session, but yeah. a committee of that importance might need to have the same kind of rules that we have as council that majority of the body has to approve it to actually make it approved. But, but I mean, but it doesn't, yeah, I mean, w whether it's four to two, you know, it's four to two, and it considered passed, or four to two considered not passed. That doesn't, 
it's the, it's still four to two, so it shouldn't change your mind. It's gonna come to it's us. It's gonna come to us no matter what. And it, it shouldn't change our opinion if the rules say it's failed or the rules say it's passed. It's still four yes, two no. You know what I mean? It's it's it is three to it? three comes to us. The yeah, same way. it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. But I mean, it, to them, it'll come to us saying plane and zoning has passed this. Right, right. but we'll reality, still... If we change right. the rules, it will say plane and zoning did not pass this. So, I mean, it could change its perception. It's Correct, possible. but yeah, you'll still see... Uh, yeah, yeah I, it's I, a terminology. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's hard to get... Yeah, it's... Is this our... Uh, uh, I remember when you sent us that clarification, but uh, is, is this our regulation, so to speak, our policy, or is that a, a state code? State code requires the majority of the seats of the chairs, regardless of present or not present, for uh, items such as resolutions and ordinances. So basically, um, policy setting or law setting with the backing of the city. The commissions are looked at as an advisory body or as just simple motion. So and it would be you can interpret that or uh, adapt your <laughs> your policies however you see fit. I mean, we could simply say it, came, um, it was voted four to two with three absent and don't say, you know, don't use the word recommend or not recommended, you know, and then then you're not biased, you know, you don't have some sort of built-in bias. That it, I wonder if it's taken a different approach if it was passed or unpassed. I don't know. You know, maybe something we can just all, I don't know. Because I've had people call me and say, well, it passed plan and zoning three to two, yeah. you know, and... And so they consider it a hardcore passed vote when I would say if only five of the seven showed up, or nine, I guess. Should that's not really I, I almost wonder, vote, yeah, if it becomes that terminology thing that we say four voted for recommend, recommending it, two voted not to recommend it. If we use that kind of that terminology, would that change? Yeah. My, it's, my only concern, though, is if the that, perception will still be. If that four is rotating every week. It's not necessarily a commission. It's kind of uh, who shows up. I mean, if the if, yeah. if something passes three to two or four to two, and then you come the next week and there's different people there, maybe it doesn't pass. Yeah. I mean, that's it, where it, that's yeah. where you have that's where on city council theoretically three to two could could be a yeah. could be a, a motion or it could be yeah, a, in, my, in my mind. If I as I look at the people on the list, like you know, if these individuals approve it, then I really don't have a reason to challenge it. In many cases. Um, so I kind of want to make sure that it's a solid, a solid vote. So some I probably bring up. But I, I think by our discussion, it's clear that when it comes at three to two, as opposed to nine to nothing, uh, we will be looking at it with uh, a little keener eyes. Which and, is probably uh, the reason too that the minutes are typically compared to ours. Uh, you know, very detailed. Uh, from planning and zoning, so you can kind of see what the content was that was being discussed, yes. uh, and often you know uh, who who was taking what what position or making what observations. And I know the chair had commented recently that he's just really happy with the um, energy of the commit of the committee, so we can commend that and thank them for their minutes. Any other well, comments? On that note, on item three, uh, late this afternoon, we were presented with a petition from the neighboring property owners. Um, the petition requested a no vote on this item for the April 6th meeting, and so we'll circulate that uh, tomorrow. Uh, typically, what these petitions are for is to request or move for a three quarters majority vote to pass the recommendation rather than a yes or a no vote. So. Um, Bill's reviewing that now, and, and we'll have an opinion on that to share soon. So three, that's, and that's not the one we were getting phone calls on. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I meant maybe it's four. Four is the one. Whatever the R3 zoning request. Okay, yep. okay. It's the wrong one there. Yeah, because that four was like 6-0, so that's not what I was. I'm sorry, number, yeah, number four yeah, was on the two, yeah. regular business. Yep. They held a... Uh, kind of a little discussion session a week or so ago and indicated, and uh, Dan and I both attended that. I think the invitation was extended to all of us, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, they, they indicated at that time that they might might take a look at the petition, so they were very, very transparent about it. Mm -hmm. 
and, and we've been working with the developer to uh, address a, a zoning agreement which would address a lot of those concerns too. So we're hopeful that we can put together something that can be considered at the time uh, that would actually uh, alleviate some of their concerns about the things that were brought up about that zoning request. And that's the rezoning, so that's three readings, so. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so. But their deadline for a petition <coughs> is by the time of the first reading, if I'm not mistaken. By the public hearing. At or before the public, public hearing. Public hearing, okay. Yeah. So they're they're well in advance of that. So that's something you know. I guess if we're you know if we're open to them, if we're open with them and and um, where we could, you know, if, if you're if you're working on details with them, if you know if it's something that we pass it first reading to get to the public hearing, <coughs> you, have to, you know what I mean. Um, it, do you, uh, what I'd like to know is if we're going to do an agreement with the developer. I mean, we had just anticipated bringing it up to the first reading. And then that could be um, aired in public okay. during that first reading, and then at the time of the second reading, they would have time to, to respond to those con the, the the contents of that agreement, and it may be that we satisfy most of their their uh, complaints about the change. Okay. So we're hopeful to do that and have that ready. We're, well, we will have it ready by the first reading because I don't want to bring that into the second sure. reading. Yeah, that's a good idea. It'll be from the very beginning. With several conversations with folks up in there, they're not totally opposed to the lots being developed. It's just the implications that an R3 brings to it if the current development doesn't go forward. So I think with their input and working with staff, uh, I think we've hit a good compromise there that allow the project to go forward if the developer so wishes and uh, give some protection to the neighborhood, I guess. So uh, it's one of those cases where it's good to bring forward questions and let people work on solutions and I'd like to commend the neighborhood for being so positive to work with I guess through the process that's why you, we do three readings and yep. Yep. slow government is a good government in this case it is <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. any other comments then the planning and zoning commission minutes for March 5th are officially received the monthly financial report from Jack is before us. Any comments? We are officially received. Staff comments. Thank you, Mayor. Just a few items this evening. Um, we are streaming live on YouTube this evening, so it is working. We had to downgrade the quality a little bit to uh, meet our amazingly slow upload speed, but it's working. So keep it working and we're continuing to tweak it to try to improve quality over time. Um, last week's meeting should be uploaded by now and moving forward if we can keep the streaming working it will upload them sooner because YouTube archives as it broadcasts. We had not been using that feature because we had not been broadcasting so uh, with great help from John Hines and Cliff Bachman at Wartburg and Tab and Garrett here um, I think we're working out the kinks. We received a letter uh, at the end of last week that uh, KCRG TV will be featuring Waverly as our town the week of June 15th through the 19th leading to a live broadcast with Bruce Sowney on Friday during the Mumford and Sons Gentlemen of the Road concert. Mm. So that'll be kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> I think they're working that out separately. Uh, um, there's a community meeting for uh, uh, business leaders and other interested folks on Wednesday, April 8th at 8.30 here uh, to get more information on that as that kicks off. So that's a great honor. Uh, it will be great to be featured. I believe they're working with TAB. They'll do some pre-video uh, work in May um, to get some of that uh, footage ready to go for that. And uh, I think that's just another, um, just another kudos to this community as they continue to push forward and, and, uh, and work on progress. And then finally, um, in front of folks tonight, we can make copies for others if they'd like, is just a synopsis or a summary of the uh, City Bridge Fund, Green Bridge Fund. I know there have been some questions on expenditures and revenues. And uh, this is just a quick one-page summary that uh, Jack put together for us that goes over um, different fees and payouts in, in kind of the 30,000-foot level, and we're happy to provide more information on, on these other projects. May I ask a question about that? Sure. Um, I, I had one other, I, I've gotten some questions about uh, apparently a million dollars from the state at some point uh, that had to be returned or was returned. Can somebody explain that? 
Well, given the, the poor rating of the bridge uh, for years, over a decade, it's been eligible for state bridge, bridge funding. And without having a replacement or relocation project, uh, we've effectively turned down that funding source. The funds are not eligible to be used to repair this structure because it doesn't do anything to mitigate the weight restriction, the width restriction, or the height restrictions. Bridge funds through the state are eligible to do repair on structures such as bridge deck overlays. But given the type of bridge that we have and the limitations it has and the deficiencies it has, those bridge funds aren't eligible to be used to repair the structure. So they would only be eligible to be used to replace it? Replace or, or relocate like to the parkway that was part of the 2003 study. And just to be clear, that's a competitive, we'd have to put in a project and it would have to be approved or we put a project in it sitting there waiting for us. The, the bridge has scored so low that it's pretty much been assured to be an available candidate year after year. And the lack of, you know, a, an eligible project has meant that we've uh, re turned down the, those funds uh, for numerous years. Would that be something when we get 10th Avenue gets to the point where there's a bridge? I mean, that would be the replacement that you could use that money for? That's a consideration. Um, again, this is not 2003, <coughs> so we would have to, in effect, renew that request and to see if it would still fit with their, um, with the DOT's um, program mandates. Could you also just uh, tell us on the, um, the outline of the expenditures or the listing of the expenditures, uh, what was the 2007 $113,757? Was that the, uh, the, the sidewalk? Yes, and you have to uh, also pair that up with uh, the bulk of the consultant professional fees. Okay. 6436 for miscellaneous. Small amount, but. <clears throat> Got some bolts. It's more or less uh, Jack's indicating that was. Um, part of some of the expenditures, expenditures that were part of the 2003 uh, task force study. Um, so I don't know if we've got, it uh, looks like we've also got some uh, miscellaneous <coughs> work um, done for uh, the expansion plates, uh, whether it was purchasing material from Walker or hiring a uh, contractor to do the welding. Thanks, and I appreciate you pulling that together for us. At this point, we looking any more staff comments? One one last question, just to just to make sure I understood. So the million dollar availability from the state uh, was never um, realized in the history of the bridge. So we never we never um, applied for it at any point and got it and then decided not to use it? Um, yeah, there, there's not a, really an application process. Okay. The way it works is every two years, uh, we have our bridge inspected, uh, bri bridges inspected, as does everyone else. There's 24,000 bridges in the state of Iowa that are inspected biannually. There are 240 within Bremer County. They then look at the scoring for those bridges and the worst ones in the state are then offered bridge funding. Okay. And again, the project, you know, simply going out and doing repairs on this one are not eligible project expenditures. So. And we never had, and we never had 
um, a decision here to replace it there in its current location or elsewhere? The recommendation of the 2003 task force was to replace the bridge in that location. That project was eligible for the million dollars in bridge funding. But because that project was not pursued, we effectively deferred uh, the bridge funding and then it, they just keep going down the list. And it was not pursued in 2003 despite the task force's recommendation because... Council voted against it to keep... To that's what I thought, but I just want to make sure, I mean, I think there are people, at least the questions I've gotten where a lot of that isn't clear, so just be good to kind of say it. I mean, is it true, though, that council voted that down at that time in 2003? I thought it was I a little bit more complicated than I that. I don't believe that council ever voted on the recommendation of the task force. Mm -hmm. What the council did, to the best of my knowledge, is um, they acknowledged uh, the other opinion to potentially save it or repair it, and I believe there was a six-month wait, and then it was that group's recommendation. I'm looking at Pete because I know he was there. He has a T-shirt to prove it. Um, <laughs> And, and so that there was never a vote on the outcome of the task force, I guess is the main point to your question. So they never, but the council did not vote to replace the bridge, but at the same time, they did vote to create the maintenance fund around that same time to maintain the bridge using okay. that maintenance fund. Yeah. Okay. So that, to me, kind of wraps it together that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this has gotten confusing. People have asked, like, so did we really give up a million dollars? I would say the answer is no. Yeah. Right. I mean, it'd be like saying, well, we, you know, we didn't build that road, so we gave up that money, or we didn't build, you know, that we didn't do that project, so we gave up. We just didn't do it, so we didn't take it, we didn't apply for it. And even more than that, was, I mean, I've heard yeah. comments to the effect that, and I think some of you have too, that, you know, that money disappeared someplace, you know, that we got a million dollars and it disappeared. So I just think it's important to, I did not hear that one. you know, uh, <laughs> I think it's just important, it's, confusing how it it's was, important to, you know, uh, give, the, give the history on this so that people understand what happened. Yeah. That's the new one. So I, guess, I guess the concern I might have on that line is, is if we do decide to repair the bridge as it is, to maintain the, the green bridge because we've heard a lot of uh, people that are very much interested in doing that and um, whether we're keeping it as a as a traffic bridge or as a pedestrian bridge um, does that put a forfeiture on this one million dollars to for a replacement option I would think obviously if we keep it as a traffic bridge it probably would I think but I'd stay away from the million dollars though we're yeah I don't want to say we that. don't know how much the money would be. Yeah, it's not hanging over our head. Could be from the state now that it's down do to two hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. It's and the parkway, like, yeah. might may or may not qualify as a replacement bridge at this point, anyway. So that's that's what I that's what I'm wondering is just you know. We did say there are three criteria that aren't being met right now as far as height and things like that that would have to be taken into consideration. So. I believe, Mike, we get a letter each year, essentially, after the, or every two years after the reports, offering us the money from the DOT. Yeah, I think it's annually. Annually, we get that letter. And we just continually basically say, no, thank you. We don't have a project at this time. That was a Thanks. wonderful, I, I, yeah, that's a wonderful yeah. question because we're all getting these questions and we want to make sure that everyone knows there's no money that's uh, sitting with us or sent back from us. Um, comment, uh, I think we're done with it. Uh, so this, this, on this, the, the bridge project fund that we've got here, this is before the 30, up to 30 that we've authorized or? So that is not shown in this yet because that's, that's not, not been expended. Okay, so that's what we've got in there right now. Correct, plus you have, we, a lot of people talk about the $144,000 so that's after the transfer in 2015-16. Okay. Okay. Uh, be 144 minus the 30-ish. Okay. Probably 27, 28, somewhere in there. Council comments on this side, Dan or David? <coughs> Just, uh, I believe there's a community meeting on April 1st at the middle school at seven o'clock for yes. the Mumford and Thank Sons. You. So. If anybody from the public wants to get more information on 
what they're going to be doing to our town and how to get involved and and that type of thing again April 1st at the middle school 7 p.m. Hmm? April 1st yeah I'm not sure who picked that date but <laughs> David I'm, miss, I'm missing the connection April 1st but. April Fool's Day oh <laughs> Um, I guess every day is April. So Sorry. I'm, I'm going to be able to play a tri uh, trick on you pretty easily then. If you <laughs> Groundhog Day. No, the only, I guess I wanted to talk, um, the, uh, the group at Eisenach Village invited um, their local council person, Tim, and uh, then the at-large uh, people, would, would uh, Edie and I would qualify, and then um, the mayor attended. It was a, it was a very nice uh, uh, gesture for them they invited us and talked about some of the issues that were important in that neighborhood so I, I appreciate them doing that and I, I enjoyed that and, and it, it was neat to see a, um, you know we, we live in that area and you know it used to be a pasture and now it's grown to a, a vibrant community and a building full of people so it was I enjoyed that to see that um, one of the things they they had uh, several different topics and we probably will talk about them eventually one of the things I wanted to mention was they asked the question how we do our our project prioritization and I guess I'd like to sometime get on the agenda or, or start a discussion kind of like I brought up with um, uh, planning and zoning is if you remember the strategic planning meeting this last year I was I was uh, I guess I had some concerns with how things were prioritized or the process that we used and talked about some of the uh, methods that I uh, proposed that maybe to help um, take some of the emotion out of it. I guess I wouldn't mind. I don't know how we do this, or I think as a group we have enough expertise that going forward we could we could develop um, a process everyone is happy about, and a process that's probably easier if we're asked. A process that's easier to explain how we prioritize projects. So, you know, maybe that's a task force, or maybe um, I know, um, and I was opposed to hiring a consultant to do that because I think we've got good expertise here and. Maybe it's um, here or, uh, across the community. So maybe just put that bug in our ear and maybe coming um, coming up this summer uh, before we have to go through that again. And I think they were interested in 20th Street when they said. Yeah, I wasn't there. I wasn't going to get into the <laughs> some of the topics. <laughs> some of the, um, that, that was that yeah. was <laughs> other than our long range planning. They just wanted yeah. to know that they're going to have we're have 20th Street on. Did yeah, you okay. Offer to connect to your neighborhood as, a, as another way to get out. There, there so, was no, a discussion. I, so, I, really? so, so this is a very good. So now you open the can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, um, it's a quick meeting today. But it was interesting. I won't go into the details because we'll talk about it eventually. But it was interesting to hear, you know, some of their concerns were completely what I thought, you know, um, of what I heard and stuff and. And so again, I, I put that plea out. If you have a concern, I don't care what it is, call us. Because um, it was interesting, I heard a completely opposite um, view of what I thought was reality. Um, but also I have to say is, so I, you know, I'm, I drove down the road there, I had some concerns about the road crossing. And I guess now I do too, that um, I think that's something we need to consider going forward too, is how to, how to manage that road crossing. And um, so everyone is satisfied. I guess I won't go and won't go into any, any more detail. But With that we've covered the meeting. <laughs> yes. Railroad crossing no is on our on our. Oh, that radar was, that was awesome that you, guys, that you yeah. guys went went there. That yeah. was neat. And I, discussions I, are taking place. I, We're going to have to get. I offer others to do the same thing. It was neat. I didn't know what to expect, and I enjoyed it. So it's good. Thank you, Damon. Beside Tim, yeah, I, I was going to I was going to comment on that too. Specifically, the point about the railroad crossing, and we talked about. Um, Having the city put something together to request the state to look at the, re relook at that, uh, the data that they use to determine whether it qualifies for additional safety enhancements, um, can always ask, you know, and, and then look at what it what 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 it would require on our part to put something in there. Uh, Mike was also at the meeting too. Before oh yeah, I forgot. Add, yeah, add, sorry, Mike was added, there too. Added the technical expertise that. <laughs> That was very, very helpful for us for, for a lot of the details and some of those those things. But um, it was a good group of people. They, they're they very much engaged in, in the community. A number of them that aren't originally from Waverly or from yeah. the area that, that have moved into the area from friends or other family members that have recommended that this is that this be a place they move to. And so, um, but very much interested in what's going on in the community and, and you know, 
not just some isolated group off in the off, uh, off in the northwest part of town, but very very much part of our town and, and um, active with that. Um, I did have some questions as far as the YouTube streaming and the and the the uh, broadcasting of our of our meetings and making sure that there is um, access to that for people and not just. Not just YouTube. I mean, I, I, I think that I know, know we've had a DVD of these in the past put down um, at, at the library. And I, I, in my opinion, I think that would be good to continue. Um, not everybody does have in, internet. I mean, do people check it out from the library and bring it home, or do they watch it in the library? I'm not sure how they how that works on that, but I just think for those that don't necessarily have the internet at home or, you know, Oh, Sarah's here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, we can make a quick copy for them at the library. And so there is a copy that they can take home. Uh, you know, do you guys keep track of how many people do that? Um, I'm sure we could pull that from, really? because it's a normal checkout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it'd, be, it'd be nice to know. I mean, oh, how um, many times? Don't shoot yeah. your copy. Yeah, it'd be nice to know how many people do that if, if it, you know, if it's worth continuing. It, I mean, it's no big deal to do. Popular in your net. I'll but, you know, if, if people go to the library and just watch it there, then, you know, YouTube would be yeah, and so and I don't I have no way of counting how often that happens because that could be happening on our computers, but as far as taking it home, some meetings are more popular than others. Sometimes there's three or four people that want to watch it, and, and others I don't know if they do get checked out. There's so. there's three people watching right now. I'm I'm one of them, but there's, there's okay. two other people somewhere in town watching, or maybe not in town. I don't know. The back yeah. room is another one of them. So. <laughs> Third is probably my wife. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, the, the, the quality, the quality is really good. I mean, this, um, the quality of the old, the old way was, was not good. Yeah, um, I would agree. Um, this live stream, even though it's better. kind of downgraded a little bit, the live stream is good. The, the ones that you've done and, and recorded and done, not and done off the DVD, that was, those are even really good. It takes three days to get them uploaded. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's let's, but let's but it's Tim but my my other assignment on that with the trouble the last week of not being able to get it up necessarily and part of part of that was the, the our equipment and stuff and what we need to do to see about upgrading that and, and a recommendation as far as that goes because I think uh, somehow getting closer to 2015 technology would be a good idea, uh, but also then cross training so mm -hmm. we have multiple people um, available that can do that sort of work. Um, it, w it was kind of a flabbergasting experience to go. I've got a, I've got a son in fourth grade who's, you know, does things on the internet all the time. We're posting YouTube videos and, and uh, editing things and putting presentations together. And I'm just, <laughs> you can't get the meeting uploaded. This was just a little bit frustrating. So. There's a little more high-tech equipment involved. Than just yeah, and it's I, just, I, it's not just just a I understand that you know, aspect, and I, I do I do help produce a TV show in, in Cedar Falls weekly with my my class of students. But it, it, with with that, but it is it just was a little bit wow. How how much do we need to do to get get to that point? So that would be my other thoughts on that. Thank you, Tim. Councilman Nyendorf. Councilman Wallstein. I would just echo what uh, Dave said, both from uh, uh, my experience just in the last couple of weeks with Dan's ward um, and meeting with, with that citizens group. I mean, it's not the same kind of community as Eisenach Village, but I thought that was uh, a very good way to have the opportunity to <coughs> listen to concerns, try to answer questions where we can, and, and, and just get a feel for where different people are, you know, even when you get groups like that together in both places. Not everybody's on the same page, but it's good to hear, you know, all of that. So I, I too, appreciated uh, the Eisenach Village meeting and uh, the, the citizens that uh, called the meeting regarding the rezoning that we'll be dealing with. So it's hard to have those kind of conversations through email or even That's over right. the phone. Yep. So, so that, that was very good. I ways. welcome yeah. more of that or any kind of communication. Yeah. That's my game. Um, I guess I would just say you know, we had two people show up from the community to talk tonight, and unless I would have made a motion to amend the agenda, they would not have been able to do that. So I would just ask that every public meeting that we have, three times a month, have public comments on it, like they should, so that, you know, these girls didn't know that I, w that I had to amend the minutes to do that, or amend the agenda to do that. They were coming regardless, so. Um, 
if they would not have let me know ahead of time, they would not have been allowed to talk. So I think we should fix that for all of our agendas going forward that have public comments. Was, was it ever off the agenda? For how it, to, somehow starting at the beginning of this year, it got moved off and never got put back on. Yeah. I think we had a discussion at one point um, that I remember, uh, you know, when we first tried the different format last January and then moved back to our regular meetings after that. I seem to remember a conversation that we had about um, dedicating study sessions to um, study for us as a council because we do need to do that every once in a while, especially knowing that um, some item, well, uh, any item that grows out of those study sessions or not uh, will always come back for three, you know, will always come back for uh, public hearing uh, probably multiple times because of the way our governance process works with um, three readings and uh, public hearings. So I, I think that might be where that came from, uh, that we kind of talked about that. I don't know that we ever took a vote on anything, but I do remember a conversation about saying, you know, sometimes we do just need as a council to have time to focus on certain topics, to talk amongst each other, to study, to hear, you know, to study uh, issues, to receive uh, research from from staff so that so that we can um, identify understand things better I guess I, so yeah I recall that as well and it was I, I when I went back and looked at it to see have we always had public comments on it and yes yes we did um, my first few years on the council and, and it was it was basically it was actually last year that we started without the public comments the last couple times that we right. had, had yeah. study sessions and I was trying to look in my notes and I didn't have anything specifically jotted down, but I did re recall the conversation about those. And I couldn't remember if it was about having just general public comments where the, we, we have the five minute uh, limit, kind of anybody can say anything about anything uh, at the beginning or whether it was dealing with like we do uh, during our regular city council meetings where you can talk about that topic that we are discussing in the regular business at that time. And I think I was trying to remember whether it's okay, is it that study session ideas that this, these are information that staff is giving to us that we don't really need the, the outside comment coming in on, uh, on at that time, whereas during a regular meeting we might have a topic that we're talking about that outside people are, are voicing opinion about that topic. And so I guess I would be okay with having that kind of open public forum, public comment period, uh, still on the study session part, and kind of keep that as long as we keep the study session part. Right. That's all I'm asking, and that's you know the one thing that citizens <clears throat> they don't know any difference between our meetings. As far as they're concerned, we meet three times. And a keep month. it at the beginning. So that so as long as we have every meeting, the what right after the approval of the minutes and the agenda, we have public comments for five minutes, then we go into our study session and it's a study session where we work on whatever we work on. But I think at every meeting it should be regular policy and it always has been until the last, you know, last year. So, but I think it's kind of silly that we have to amend an agenda just to allow citizens to speak. So it's a good thing they let me know ahead of time, I guess. For my comments, I'd say that uh, the uh, joy for me is to see all the interest in amongst our citizens. And I'd hope this translates into everything from voting to just feeling a part of the process. We work real hard to make everyone feel uh, inclusive and uh, close. The, uh, the, the amount of comments that I receive is really interesting. And, they, and, and people will say, I saw you last night because we were talking about it and I wanted to, and they're really engaged and it's amazing how many people, this is what we want, this is the way that we're trying to become. So this is all encouraging and this is a wonderful conversation to have and it shows that uh, here on a study session night, there's people who felt the need to express it now rather than wait. And uh, so the uh, feeling in the Waverly community is very, very positive. Before I make my final comments, Amanda. I just want to thank Chris for inviting me to be the guest council member this month. It was very fun. So I've enjoyed it. Thank you, Amanda. Good to have you with us. Uh, for my final comment, 
Workford College is launching in a Waverly phase of their fundraising drive, and it's just a wonderful effort to improve the college, and as the college grows and improves, so goes Waverly. And we have the Waverly phase being opened up yesterday, and it's really exciting. I hope that everyone can feel the pulse of this college as it strives with new dreams and how Waverly and Workford together can become a growing community and an excelling community. And uh, I, I have a hope, Waverly, that an overwhelming majority of everyone living here can in some size, shape, or form support this effort. It would be so exciting and it would be an exclamation mark behind this wonderful relationship we have that finds expression every day and we think of the economic impact on our community from this college. Uh, they are also our second largest employer, almost our largest. And so we have an exciting chapter of uh, this relationship coming before us, and let's all stay tuned. Is there a motion to, to adjourn? Motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor signify with yes. 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 Adjourned. <laughs>